Some people just drive you nuts. And sometimes you can't escape them because they live in the same house as you. If you don't find yourself in this boat, you still know that living in community is not always easy, and it's bound to create a little frustration and some tension. And the devils exploit the tensions of living with others. Many of us don't commit too many of the big sins, like lying, stealing, adultery, or murder. But the devils are generally much more effective at compounding our more mundane sins, especially the ones touching those with whom we are close. This is how the third of the Screwtape Letters begins. My dear Wormwood, I am very pleased by what you tell me about this man's relations with his mother, but you must press your advantage. The enemy will be working from the center outwards gradually bringing more and more of the patient's conduct under the new standard, and may reach his behavior to the old lady at any moment. You want to get there first. By the way, many Christians talk about the Christian life. They seem to think of it as a T-chart. On the one side, there are spiritual things. You know, God stuff, like praying and going to church. And on the other side is ordinary life, like working and cooking dinner. And we think of these as separate realms. And there's a bunch of things on the ordinary life side of the chart that we label as secular, like certain kinds of music or things like hockey, unless of course you play in a church league. <laughs> and the idea is that as Christians, we should be trying to increase the things on the spiritual side of the chart, maybe listening to praise and worship music while we're cooking dinner. I don't know. The Christian life is getting more stuff on the God side of the chart. Lewis or Screwtape offers a very different image of how we grow spiritually. He says that God will be working from the center outward. Our lives are made up of all kinds of things, like work and play, socializing, sports, music, sex, eating, and relationships, and a whole lot more. But the spiritual isn't a separate category from these things. Like in the T-chart, think about each part of our life as a slice in a pizza. God is central, and over a lifetime we keep submitting more and more of our lives to God. Some slices get turned over to God more quickly than others, but there's this general expansion from the center. And what the devils are trying to do is work the other direction, trying to make each slice less godly. Screwtape understands this. Spirituality covers everything, including the mundane things of life. The part of the patient's life that involves his mother is part of his life that God wants. But the devils want it too. Screwtape continues. Keep in close touch with our colleague Lubos, who is in charge of the mother and build up between you and that house a good settled habit of mutual annoyance. Daily pinpricks. The following methods are useful. Screwtape then offers four specific methods that the devils find useful in working against the purposes of God within our most intimate relationships. The first method is to get the patient to think of spiritual things as being internal, states of mind. Keep his mind on the inner life. He thinks his conversion is something inside him, and his attention is therefore chiefly turned at present to the states of his own mind, or to that very expurgated version of them, which is all you should allow him to see. Encourage this. The devils want our attention to be turned only inward, not outward. If our gaze is turned inward toward these grand spiritual ideals, then we will ignore our most basic duties to the actual people in our lives. Screwtape mocks us again by pointing out that we can easily be made to neglect the obvious. You must bring him to a condition in which he can practice self-examination for an hour without discovering any of those facts about himself, which are perfectly clear to anyone who has ever lived in the same house with him or worked in the same office. This is in line with what Robbie Byrne says. O oh, wad some power the gifty gius to see ourselves as either see us. God would have us know ourselves. The devils want to hide from us who we are. And we are usually willing participants in the devil's plans. It's a lot more fun to find fault in others than it is to find it in ourselves. Screwtape's second method is to direct the patient's prayers. Make sure that they are always very spiritual, that he is always concerned with the state of her soul and never with her rheumatism. Screwtape is talking about the patient's prayers about his mother. Wormwood is to get the patient's prayers to be very spiritual. Screwtape has put quotation marks around this word because our understanding of that word is so very limited. Remember the T-chart. The devils want our prayers to be focused on the abstract, on her soul, and ignore the real person, the one with rheumatism. And when he actually ends up praying for the actual mother, Wormwood is to direct the patient's prayers to settle on her sins. And eventually he may come to think about her sins to include anything that annoys him. Consider how the man's attitude toward his mother would be different if he were praying for her rheumatism instead of the state of her soul and her annoying sins. 
Would it not make him more understanding, loving, patient, kind, and gentle with her? We can't have that now, can we? By directing his prayers this way, Screwtape says, You can keep rubbing the wounds of the day a little sore. Even while he is on his knees, the operation is not at all difficult and you will find it very entertaining. But there is a second benefit to this approach. Screwtape explains it. In the second place, since his ideas about her soul will be very crude and often erroneous, he will in some degree be praying for an imaginary person, and it will be your task to make that imaginary person daily less and less. Like the real mother, the sharp-tongued old lady at the breakfast table. The T-chart dividing the spiritual from the ordinary does not describe reality, the way things really are. We are creatures that are both physical and spiritual. So when we pray for somebody, we need to pray for all of them. To fuddle us, the devils would blind us to this fact. The end game of this strategy would be to get the patient to the point where none of the positive sentiments from his prayers will ever translate into how he treats his mother. I have had patients of my own so well in hand that they could be turned at a moment's notice from impassioned prayer for a wife or son's soul to beating or insulting the real wife or son without a qualm. Screwtape's third method has the shortest explanation, and this is probably because from a very young age we learned this one very well. Probably with the help of our own personal tempter. <laughs> when two humans have lived together for many years, it usually happens that each one has tones of voice and expressions of face which are most unendurably irritating to the other. Work on that. We know this one so well. Screwtape says to Wormwood, Bring fully into the consciousness of your patient that particular lift of his mother's eyebrows which he learned to dislike in the nursery, and let him think how much he dislikes it. Let him assume that she knows how annoying it is, and does it to annoy. And don't let the patient consider how ridiculous it is to think this is so. And also hide from him that he does a bunch of things that annoy her too, of which he is unaware. Screwtape ends these instructions by stating, This is easily managed. And that's because we are so predisposed to it. This is all very adolescent, and it's funny how most of us never outgrow it. The last method that Screwtape presents is the one where we push the other person's buttons, and then we're offended that they responded exactly the way we expected them to, maybe even wanted them to. It starts with, well, you know how if you know someone really well, you can get them really mad by saying the most innocuous thing, or you say it in that particular tone of voice, or you say it at just that right moment, and then you can get them to lose their mind. This is where the devils want to get us and it takes some coordination between the demonic handlers of both patients involved. Screwtape tells Wormwood, You and Glubos must see to it that each of these two fools has a sort of double standard. Your patient must demand that all his own utterances are to be taken at their face value and judged simply on the actual words, while at the same time judging all his mother's utterances with the fullest and most oversensitive interpretation of the tone and the context and the suspected intention. She must be encouraged to do the same to him. The end game for the devils is that they can get us to the point where one person accidentally on purpose can send another into a lather and walk away innocently explaining, All I said was, when's dinner? Or, can I borrow your sweater? Or, have you seen the tape measure? And then she just lost it. And they almost believe that this is actually what went down. Screwtape then concludes. Once this habit is well established, you have the delightful situation of a human saying things with the express purpose of offending, and yet having a grievance when offense is taken. This letter is about the man's relationship with his mother. But it's really about all our relationships. And the greater point is that our ordinary life is spiritual and therefore of great interest to both the forces of heaven and the forces of hell. Yes, our internal life is important, but all that good stuff on the inside needs to find its way out into our ordinary lives to bless the ordinary people with whom we come in contact every day. If it doesn't, what good is it really? Well, it's good for the devils. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.